Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the analysis of Yoleno TV. I hope you well from wherever you're watching this channel. Now, Kipruto Arab Kirwa <coughs> was invited to a TV 47 show in uh, the, the Dabit, the morning cafe, to discuss about the scorecard of William Samoy Rutos. Uh, two years time. During that discussion, Kipruto Arab Kirwa took issue with the way William Ruto has been micromanaging ministries and literally running ministries from the state house. In, in leadership, you are told you need to build teams. And once you build those teams, allow those teams to work within their own timelines, achieve the milestones, then you, as a leader, you take credit for the efforts of all the people so, so that you multiply your capacity, uh, your efforts through the capacity of others. President Ruto has not been able to build teams. And part of the success of the Kibaki team, whether it is Kibaki 1 or 2, is he allowed people to work. He never micromanaged any ministry. He would allow you to work with your officers and you go brief him on the need basis. So we want to go deeper into these remarks by Kipruto Arab Kirwa. But first, let's all click this like button. And for new subscribers, please click on the subscribe button. Thank you for your cooperation. So one would feel that Kipruto Arab Kirwa maybe is bitter with William Ruto. Maybe because he ditched UDA, that is Kipruto Arab Kirwa, and expected that Azimio would form the next government only for Chebukati to stop that dream. So affirmed by a court of law. Because he had built expectations among Kenyans to a level that if anybody else had become president for that period, today the people would be in the streets. So it is good that uh, his own hopes and projections and promises <coughs> are consuming him. Because he gave us hope, but we realized that he did not have a plan on how to achieve whatever he was telling us was achievable, including the bottom-up issue. Now, in, in leadership, you are told you need to build teams. And once you build those teams, allow those teams to work within their own timelines, achieve the milestones. Then you, as a leader, you take credit for the efforts of all the people so, so that you multiply your capacity uh, your efforts through the capacity of others. President Ruto has not been able to build teams. And part of the success of the Kibaki team, whether it is Kibaki 1 or 2, is he allowed people to work. He never micromanaged any ministry. He would allow you to work with your officers and you go brief him on the need basis. Uh, I remember for the five years I was his minister, I only got three calls from State House. One, it was about food situation. Another one was about a colleague who has defected to ODM during that particular transition. And I think another one was also about a looming famine situation. But the president never talked to me on micro issues or issues of my parastatus. If you take a closer look at the concerns of Azimio during vetting of cabinet secretaries, especially what John Mbadi said, and I believe you remember how Mbadi referred to Ruto's list. He referred to it as a skunk. I mean, that is something that trended for the better part of that time. How he referred to the list that had Aisha Jumwa, the list that had other first-time people like Moses Kuria, you know. He said that these are people who have corruption allegations and people who cannot deliver. So he called the list a skunk. So what Kipruto Arab Kirwa is trying to bring on board here is the same narrative that John Buddy brought in 2022 during the grilling, the vetting of these cabinet secretaries, these leaders who are given those slots to run the ministries. So he says that the main reason, according to him, the main reason is that Ruto chose to give these uh, leaders who cannot deliver because he wanted to run the ministries from status he wanted to micromanage i mean it's like the same concept of a remote control 
if you have a remote control and you're seated somewhere, there's a television there, or maybe there's a robot, you will control this robot how you want it to move. So what Kipruta Rapkiro is trying to tell us is that William Ruto is micromanaging. He's not giving these cabinet secretaries an opportunity to deliver. And that explains why the government cannot deliver. That is what Kab uh, Kipruto Rapkiro, the former uh, minister under Mwai Kibaki's regime, who served as the minister of agriculture. So John Badi referred to Ruto's list if you can have Aisha Juma tasked with the responsibility of reforming our civil service, which has challenges, I fear that is not something that is going to work. This is a cabinet that was informed by political expediency. The president has actually appointed 2027 campaign managers, regional campaign managers. The president is simply telling us that we give him a cabinet that is not going to function because he's ready to run the entire government system, machinery, and structure from state house using advisors. Back then, John Badi doubted people like Aisha Jumwa and a few other cabinet secretaries who were picked, you know, picked. There is also Penida Malonza, you know. You remember that, I think, during the grilling, she could not defend herself and then she was to be uh, short she was to be removed from the list but she survived so that is why kipruto thinks that the main reason why ruto chose to pick people who cannot deliver is because he wanted to run all these ministries so that he could strike deals with all the the all the projects you know so that every ministry works to benefit him and our cronies and our proxies and friends all the friends they are supposed to benefit. That is why if you look at the cycle of William Bruto now, those friends, some of them are, have owned, are owning a lot of shares. There was this story of uh, the chair for Digital Health Agency. This is a, a, a docket within uh, SHIF, the new social health insurance fund. You know, that the laws there require that uh, there be digital health agency. So, Ruto picked a former chairman of Amaco Insurance, who, and we did an analysis on that, said Amaco belongs to William Ruto, according to the sources. So if this chair, the former chair of Amaco, was picked to, to chair now the Digital Health, Health Agency, then we saw that there is some kind of interest, personal interest, in this Digital Health Insurance docket. Because this person who was picked was prone to a lot of, uh, there are complaints of, you know, allegations of corruption. We don't have facts, but people have been saying such kind of things. So in this scenario, where Kipruto Arab Kirwa brings another narrative of William Ruto micromanaging the ministries, Kipruto goes further to say that William Ruto has blocked the systems. And as a result, the systems cannot work. And something that Kenyans should know, even when, because the president as the leeway to appoint chairman of various boards. Even when he knew that is the situation, he would tell you, give him, you give him two names. And from the two names, he will pick one of them. So therefore, he allowed you to choose the team that you want to work with, having chosen us as the team. So I, I feel President Ruto, even if he was to change cabinet, he must change his style of working mm -hmm. to allow other people to work. Yes. Some members of the cabinet could have done something else away from the cabinet, but some of the cabinet members are good people. The second issue is that um, the president also needs to delegate. Uh, I remember a number of things. So the president would ask uh, head of public service to consult with a certain minister. We, if a delegation goes to him that we want to appoint so-and-so in this position, and a, a clearing example is that uh, they wanted to appoint somebody to the National Cereals and Produce Board. They called me and they said uh, there is a delegation from a certain part of the country. And uh, the, the, the delegation would have wished that so and so gets a position in this particular institution. Then I asked Mudaura, what about the person who is already there because I'm the one who appointed him? They said, no, it is okay. He's going to be elevated as a permanent secretary. That is a kind of consultation. And any time as a minister, if you have an issue, uh, 
uh, you either see the president or you see head of public service. And Mudauro was so thorough. As you go there as minister, you'll write down whatever you've said. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there are three requests, after a few weeks, it will call you that the request number one cannot be done because of one, two, three. The request number two is going to be done in this particular way. And he allowed, he, he, the, Kibaki allowed the systems to work. But so you cannot block the system and you expect to deliver. And, and uh, cabinet secretaries cannot work. So that is the perception that Kipruto is trying to bring on board. And going by the video that I've just shared, you can actually tell by the words of Kipruto Rapkiro that that is what he means. What Kipruto is saying in a, is akin to what used to happen during Idi Amin's time. I want to give you a brief history of what used to happen during Idi Amin. I'm not saying that William Ruto is Idi Amin, but I'm just saying that this concept of micromanaging ministries was observed during Idi Amin's time. Because Idi Amin used to run ministries single-handedly and would issue orders without considering the people he had appointed in those ministries. He didn't want to know whether you are a minister, a permanent secretary. He didn't care. All he wanted to do was to run those ministries himself. And I believe you also remember the story of Idi Amin directing Uganda Central Bank Governor Joseph Mburu to print more money to deal with the Uganda economic recession that forced Uganda to go bankrupt. That story, if you've been following the story of Uganda, if you've been doing uh, some research on Uganda's history, political history, before Museveni came to power, before people like, you know, you remember the story of Milton Obote and the like. So if you remember that history very well, Idi Amin back then micromanaged the ministries. And this is what Kipruta Rapkiro is trying to tell us here, that even William Ruto is micromanaging the ministries. You know, the, the, the bad thing about micromanaging, you know, when you micromanage a unit, means if there are failures in those ministries, any failure in the ministry, the person who is, who is going to be blamed is the cabinet secretary, who in this case is the minister. But if there are successes in the ministry, the person who is going to be, to be praised is the president because things are working. So this concept of uh, Kipruta Rapkiro trying to say that William Ruto is micromanaging, we can link it to that narrative of failing the systems. He's talking about blocking the systems. So blocking these cabinet secretaries from executing what they can deliver. In that story again, Kipru talks about the time when he was the cabinet secretary uh, or the minister of agriculture during Mwai Kibaki's term. And he says that during that five-year term, he only got three calls, three calls from the setters. And he listed the calls and the reasons why those calls were made. One of the calls was of a certain, a certain leader who was ditching, who had ditched their party to join ODM. So he talks about so many of this. So in an actual, he was trying to say that Kibaki gave ministers an opportunity to work. But William Ruto is not giving cabinet secretaries an opportunity to work. So as a result, systems cannot work. And in a nutshell, the systems have been blocked. For those who remember Kipruto very well, yeah, I think going by the history, he's the person who beat uh, Masinde Muliro, I think, from going by the history. He beat Masinde Muliro, not physically, but in votes. You know, and also, you remember in 2022, being the vice chair of UDA, he ditched UDA and joined uh, the faction of Mata Kar Karua. The, 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 the point was that he knew very well that Raila was going to clinch this uh, presidency. But you know what happened? You know, the issue of theft and the and just from this uh, and just how justice was not delivered in the Supreme Court. All those, you are aware about all those. We don't want to talk about them because we've talked about them in so many videos in 2022. So in this analysis, ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to bring to you what Kipruto Arab Kirwa thinks or seems to believe William Ruto is subjecting uh, the systems of the government to. 
he is simply not giving those systems an opportunity to work the systems have been blocked that is according to Kipruta Rabkiro who had who was invited for a show in TV 47 that is the morning cafe so ladies and gentlemen I'd like to raise my case here but perhaps if you're watching this video and you have not subscribed please take one second and subscribe to this channel give this video a like so until you catch up again stay safe and stay blessed